this is my an additional attempt at making a traditional video that actually films. So I recently purchased these Bray Reese Professional Heavy Body Acrylic Paints at Walmart because I've been thinking about it for over a month and they didn't seem crazy expensive but they are more expensive than my previous acrylic paints but these are the only full artist grade ones or that claim to be full artist grade and they're in such nice little containers they seem more portable and they seem easier to open and close than previous acrylics I've gotten and they just have some colors and it's just very well done so I decided to invest in them. So they were at Walmart in Canada for $14.97 for each set which makes it $34.43 with tax altogether. $17.21 each set once you add the tax which equals out to $1.43 per tube so 11 cents per one ounce of paint because there's 12 tubes with 12 milliliters each. These are the two different sets that were available the jewel tone set and the bright set and I do like the way that they're packaged and the way that it's phrased. So jewel tones seems to be the more basic set but with the addition of gold and silver that a normal basic set wouldn't have. So let's see how easy they are to open. Now I've already previously removed tape that was on the sides of these and let's open them up. So these tubes I'm hoping will be more transportable and also easy to open and close because all my other acrylic paints are in very large tubes and I find them very cumbersome to open and close and very difficult to travel around and I even need to use um, pliers to open my old um, Galleria Windsor Newton ones which has good paint but it's very difficult to open and close them so let's see. So these are easy to open. So the back of the package says handmade creativity our pure pigment acrylics are crafted in small batches to ensure the colors are rich and bold, 100% pure, zero fillers or extenders, and 100% color fast. Our colors never shift or fade guaranteed. Now, it's weird that they say color fast because that's not light fast. Color fast usually is supposed to mean it stays bound to fabric and doesn't fade when it's washed. Light fast is supposed to be the term or color shifting or fading guaranteed. So if they mean color fast, that just means if you put it on fabric and then you wash it, it'll stay just as bright. I wanna know if these are actually light fast because color fast and light fast are not the same terms. And I tried to look it up online, but I couldn't find anything specific. So this is the bright set. And I really do like the packaging and the layout. And it says the same thing on the back of this one. And it also says it's um, non-toxic, which for professional grade to be non-toxic, I don't know if they're light fast because some of the more toxic ingredients are very light fast actually. All right, so here they are, all the different tubes. And I'm just gonna check live here how easy it is to open one. So we're gonna try to open the Oh, well, each set has a titanium white and a Mars black. We don't really need a Mars black in each set, but it's good to have the white. So let's just try to open the white. Oh, that is very easy to open and close. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Some smaller high quality tubes that are easy to open and close and transport around. So it's easier for me to pull stuff out to do a painting, especially quick, or if I wanted to bring stuff with me down to the park. So that's really good. So the next section is going to all be in time lapse and I'm going to do narrated voiceover and we'll see the swatches and my first impressions of this product. Working on all the swatching and this is in my B Paper Company Super Deluxe Mixed Media Sketchbook which has very high quality paper, one of the highest quality papers I've ever used and I find it works really well with all kinds of medium. And here I am deciding, oh wait a minute, you know, I'm supposed to be swatching these on this black paper too. So this is just a tuxedo black cardstock I believe I got at Walmart. It could be the one I got at Staples, but it's a black, general black cardstock. So here I am doing the swatches on both the different colored papers in order to compare how they look. Now I probably should have put a black ink line down to do the swatches on top of to check the transparency. And later when I did the swatches that go in with the paint packages, I did put a black line so I could see how opaque or transparent the different colors were on white paper. You can really see the transparency and opacity on the black paper though. And you see how different the colors can show up on different colored papers. So it's a good idea to test out 
your paints and other materials on all kinds of different papers because everything reacts differently on different papers. With the time jump here, it's me waiting for the paint to dry and also labeling everything in the sketchbook. And I'm doing the second set, the jewel tone set now. And I'm not doing the white or the black a second time because those colors are duplicated between the two sets. But in general, they're pretty useful. A lot of times people don't use black when painting in order to create their own black and mixes, but I think a touch of black and sometimes even a lot of black can be very helpful. And if you're painting things with heavy black shadows, like things in Western comic style or imitating ink, you can use black acrylic paint for that just fine. And in certain effects and situations, you do still want the black. But in general, the color you use the most of for acrylic paint is the white because you need it for mixing and because you use more of it for mixing. So I'm using both watered down and thick versions of the same paint to do this picture here. And I'm using a public domain reference and I'm basically copying it extremely closely to the reference. I also drew the pencil off camera to save time because I'm finding the longer traditional art videos impossible to upload on YouTube, but I'm gonna try. Find the consistency of these paints is like more like whipped cream. It's kind of unusually light, not as thick or dense as I'm used to actually. It's a really beautiful consistency, but I find it doesn't paint quite the same as the other paints I'm used to. I don't know if that's because it's technically professional grade and the other ones I have are technically student grade, but I have a lot of high quality paints that are still light fast that I prefer quite frankly to the feel of these paints. These paints are very plasticky and very shiny and they also kind of flow in a, a creamier way that's both pleasant and off-putting. It's hard to explain. It works a bit differently than any other acrylic paint I've used before. And strangely, it seems like I'm using slightly more of the paint proportionally than I thought I would. And I don't know how to explain that. They keep saying there's not a bunch of fillers and stuff, but without these additional fillers, maybe that makes it a little too much like whipped cream, or maybe that makes it too shiny because I'm finding these paints are very plasticky and shiny, and I don't actually like that. I prefer the paints to be more matte and more um, sort of heavy and dense. So unfortunately, I don't really like the consistency of the paints, oddly, as much as I like uh, my Winsor Newton Galleria or the Liquitex Basics or the Amsterdam Acrylics or the Above Ground Art Supplies brand, which are the other ones I have. But they're all in really big tubes that are difficult to open and transport. And I thought these sets would be really nice because they're a lot easier to open and close. The good news is the tubes are very easy to open and close. The bad news is I don't actually like the paint itself quite as much as I like those other brands I just listed. Now technically it's a heavy body acrylic according to all the labels and everything. And I've never used an official heavy body acrylic before. So maybe the difference in feel that I'm perceiving as kind of a whipped cream feel, which is slightly weird to me, is just because it's a heavy body and the other ones I have aren't considered heavy body. Um, if so, I think I might go back to my old paints more, but I'm definitely gonna use these ones up. Now, I was finding that these paints, they work quite well, they layer well, they water down well, but as I was saying, they, they are extremely plasticky and shiny, which to me is not a good thing. This is something you put up with with acrylic, not something you desire. And I think that aside from one dollar store brand, I have never had acrylic paints that are this shiny and this plasticky. And I don't think that's really as good for the money, considering the technically student grade but light fast paints I'd invested in before seem to actually be of a higher quality in my opinion. But I don't know, maybe these were intentionally made to, to have this shiny quality. And in that case, I'm kind of confused because I don't know anyone who actually likes that quality in acrylic paints. Now I'm going to do the other bird you see penciled in, the bee eater, uh, next to the hummingbird that my hand keeps covering. I'm going to do that with matte medium in order to see if that improves my experience with these paints, because you can always get acrylic mediums to add to the paints to actually change the properties and qualities of them. And in this case, I definitely want to try to matte, matte these paints, make them less shiny and instead make them much more non-reflective. With the other acrylic paints I've used before, these dry very quickly. 
And for some reason, whatever it is, they actually seem to dry the fastest I've ever experienced of any of my acrylic paints. Now, maybe it's because it's dry right now. It's not a very wet day, so the paints are drying out faster. But I'm using a tearaway palette and they seem to be drying out pretty fast. Now I sprayed them with a spray bottle to try to extend this, but you don't want to over spray things because then you're accidentally watering stuff down. Just kind of putting a quick streaky background in. Now I found the white was non-reflective and when I mixed it in with colors that made the other paint color that I mixed less shiny. Um, but it's in general not necessarily a good thing like I already said. I seem to be repeating myself about that but they're still good paints. They're just not as good as I was hoping for how much they cost. Okay so this is dried and unfortunately the paint is like really shiny and very plasticky which I don't really like even though it is plastic based acrylic. Um, I find my Liquitex Basics, my Amsterdam acrylics, above ground art supply brand that I bought before and the Windsor Newton Gallerias aren't as plasticky so there's some dollar store ones that are. Weirdly the yellow white, the yellows and whites aren't but these are extremely shiny and plasticky and I'm finding my hummingbird like that as well and where I mixed more white in I'm not having that issue but it's too plasticky and shiny for me I don't really like it as much except when I mix more white or yellow in, then that reduces this shininess. So I'm doing another bird here, which is going to be a um, bee eater, and I'm going to add the matte medium into this paint to see if that'll fix it so that it's not the type of plasticky shiny I don't really like. And then if that works, I have smaller bottles I can carry with me if I want to bring this on the road. So we'll see if I can make this paint the way I like it with the matte medium. Otherwise, I'm not as happy with this paint for the price. Okay, so off camera, I painted this bee heater and I used matte medium because I don't want this video to be too long. And it is better with the matte medium, in my opinion. It's much, much shinier and more plasticky without it. And then with it, it's, it's a lot nicer, more like my regular professional acrylics. So I think the only way I can really have these paints fully usable is when I have the matte medium. So I'm going to have to use it with the matte medium because it's just extremely shiny and plasticky. But I do have a smaller bottle of the matte medium that I can bring with me on the road. So I'm just going to have to keep that in mind for these paints. But the good news is the tubes open and close really easily, which is important to me. And they're quite transportable. But the bad news is, without the matte medium, I think the paint is just too shiny and plasticky, except for the titanium white, lemon yellow, and azo yellow orange. But they're still usable, especially once I add the matte medium, so I'm just gonna have to use them with the matte medium. So that's my first impressions review of these paints. They are worth the money, but they're not a great deal, because overall they're extremely plasticky without medium. If you're going to use them, I advise using matte medium with them for sure and get a small bottle if you're going to transport with them. They have very easy to open and close tubes, which makes a large difference to me, so they might still be worth your money. I hope you can make an informed decision. Thank you for watching the video. Bye!